things happen. Don't get yourself into matches like that, and things will change, and things will definitely help out. You don't want to find yourself having one of those, having one of those moments where you make a mistake and it costs your team a little bit just because of the free kick and just because of the decision you make. This is our first good chance of the game. And a goal. And a goal. Played in by number 21, Mackenzie Dawes. That sophomore forward came back just six games ago. Head coach Jamal Mubarak said that this is going to be one of those players that helps, her, helps him out and was able to win a game for him. He's able to do good things. And as you can see right there, ball played over the top. Liz Compton comes out a little bit, gets caught in a little bit of no man's land. Mackenzie Dawes with the outside of the foot shot on the half volley, on the bounce, just flights it over the keeper's head with the class finish and a great opportunity to put DeWitt up on the scoreboard, 1-0. to zero. And you can see right there why head coach Jamal Mubarak is just so excited about Number 21, Mackenzie Dawes. Score by number 21, Mackenzie Dawes. As only a sophomore comes back in and does this stuff. You know, he says here that everyone stepped up big time and our team has really been working together great as of late. With players like that can make something out of nothing. That's a great asset to have as a coach for sure. Not quite on the same page there is number nine, Taylor Bishop, and number 13, Kaylee Fisher. Uh, looking to have her come through a little bit quicker and maybe make a run to the corner. Uh, however, just comes up to throw in, and that ball ends right back up on the foot of the DeWitt attacker. <laughs> Missed there by Fisher. Goes right back to Compton, who's going to compose herself here and come right back at us at, at DeWitt, I'm sure. Goals happen as a goalkeeper, and one of those things you have to do is shake those things off. Got a friend or a family member who can't make it to the game today. They can keep up with all action at the MHSAA.tv. This is one of six games you can watch live online today. Subscription is good for watching spring finals of lacrosse, baseball, softball, and girls soccer over the next two weeks. You can go online after the game to watch highlights of the, or, of the game or the game on an on-demand basis. Follow the tournament. As you can hear the guy in the PA announcer talk about the MHSAA.TV, the MHSA Network and Student Broadcast Program. Uh, we at Cedar Springs High School can't talk highly enough about that. What a great way for students to be involved as the teacher and director of the program at Cedar Springs High School. We have about 17, 18 kids who are involved in this on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, doing a whole bunch of sporting events, news, news, news events, uh, PSAs, news stories, um, school, p school spirit pieces. Uh, we did a high school lip dub and all that stuff. Getting these kids involved at this stuff at this level is a true big asset, and what a great asset we have with the MHSAA TV and all the stuff that they do for us as well. So, on behalf of Cedar Springs Television, I'd like to give them a huge thank you. Back to the game here. Just over 13 minutes left to go in the first half. Uh, Northview fighting to come back in. Northview fighting to come back in on that on that aspect and get get that goal turned back. And end of that halftime at a 1-1 tie rather than down by one. Number 16, Madison Teeman coming in for DeWitt. You look at DeWitt's roster, it's a relatively young roster. And by relatively young, there is one senior on the team, and that's number five, Jordan Lewis. Everybody else is a junior or a sophomore or a freshman. And re currently on the district roster, he has, he has six freshmen. Six freshmen in here and a bunch of sophomores as well. So you anticipate that this could be one of those things where it's a continuous run for DeWitt. DeWitt, a history of success uh, on and off the soccer field, both boys and girls teams. And then you're going to end up here where you have all these players returning and all these different options. And it'll keep it going for years to come. You know, head coach Jamal Mubarak, one of, the, one of the better coaches in the state, one of the most well-known coaches in the state, uh, and he's definitely going to do what it takes to get these players to play at the highest level. Forcing the ball there, rolls over the touchline there for a throw-in for DeWitt. That Northview midfielder, a little too patient, 
Swings at it. And just on cue, there's number five, Jordan Lewis, into the game for DeWitt, the lone senior on their roster. Dawes gets turned back in, looks to play her teammate out wide. First time service in. Ball takes a shot from the 18, deflects off a DeWitt player. Fortunate for North when those balls deflect, you have no idea where they're going to go. Uh, and Liz Compton watches it roll over the end line. Jordan Lewis on the first time win. And we're back. Sorry, guys, there for the technical difficulties. Nothing to miss, though. Only gone for a quick less than a minute break. And nothing else on the scoreboard. Still 1-0. DeWitt Panthers leading the Northview Wildcats here in the Division II Regional Semifinal here at Forest Hills Northern Husky Stadium. Tough tackle in there from the DeWitt defender on, on Morgan Otteson. Unfortunately, a little late, does catch the attacker from Northview. And it's in for a free kick that, once again, Lauren DeShane Trying to get her feedback on the ground for the technical difficulties. Northview comes back in hard. Nothing resulting from that free kick. Morgan Addison bl shot blocked at the top of the 18. Able to get cleared out from the Panthers. The <laughs> Panthers do a great job of keeping the ball, making good decisions, being patient, not rushing into a whole bunch of chances unless they need to. They keep the ball on their feet, let the defenders make a move, defenders make a mistake, and then look for that last ball through. <laughs> DeWitt playing a little bit of 3v2 keep away right there in the middle of the box. Ball still ends up on the feet of Mackenzie Dawes. Ultimately cleared by Northview Wildcats. You said right there's a perfect job of the composure there with the outside back of DeWitt. Under pressure from the Northview attacker, keeping it good. Ball played right through. Shot taken just wide, just out of bounds. Another goal kick for Northview Wildcats. Every team at every school has a story to tell. And now you can find those stories behind the scenes online at the MHSAA second half. Check out spring tournament coverage every day by clicking the second half link on the homepage of the MHSAA website. As I was sitting there at my desk today getting ready for this game, took a lot of view on those track and field finals uh, this weekend that happened at Zeeland West, Comstock Park, Great competition there and great things going on. Now it's a great way to keep up in tune with all the events, the MHSAA. All it takes is a little bit of internet connection, going to MHSAA website and finding those things out. A few minutes of your time, you get a lot of stuff going on. A little late challenge there from the over-aggressive DeWitt attacker. On the outside back of Northview. It's going to bring up a free kick just outside the 0 18 of Northview.
Ball fought from over the end line. Forced out of bounds for a goal kick. That junior defender, number 16, Dominic Robinson. Uh, one of those players in here for the Northview that's going to be instrumental here. Truly fast, quick-paced player. Able to get out of bounds. Actually, I correct myself. Wasn't, didn't end up going out for a goal kick. Ball does go just out of bounds for a throw-in. Just like that, the throw-in moves slightly up the field. Off the head of the number five, Jordan Lewis, for another Northview throw. Once again, do it. Just keep in possession. Kenzie Dawes looking to play her teammate in. He's able to play her in. It's number eight, 18, Allison Sims looking to combine. Opportunity gone beckoning. Great ball out wide. Great service in time. And unfortunately, Allison Sims not able to get her strongest foot on it. Ball ends up rolling just wide. As we talk about this stadium and the wind earlier today, playing here at Husky Stadium, it is sort of down in a bowl setting, tree lined all around. Uh, and the wind sort of coming across the field, sort of a DeWitt's favor. Uh, so maybe that is playing a, a, a role into how the Panthers are playing this first half. Maybe how Northview is too. So it could be one of those things that as the second half starts, you're going to see a whole big difference in how teams play and how the game goes on. Players on DeWitt do a great job of finding those little tiny passing lanes, moving off the ball to receive it from another teammate really quickly off it and doing those fine little options. If you watch the game go by, you'll see uh, Bishop, you'll see Dawes and all those girls try to find those little lanes to receive a ball. Which is seeming a little bit faster. Ball played a little too vertical. Ball's going to roll over for a goal, for a goal kick. However, if, if Liz Compton was under pressure, she was in the right place in the right spot to grab the ball at the first time. Once again, being first to the ball. Number 18, like you can see right there, we're talking about getting in that pass on the lane. 18, Allison Sims slides and finds it. Northview moving off the ball extremely well today. At times playing possession quite easily around the Northview Wildcats. Two minutes, just over two minutes left to go in this first half. DeWitt Panthers leading 1-0 over the Northview Wildcats. You know, if you look around in the bleachers though today, Northview Wildcats did travel. There is a good amount of fans here wearing red. Northview being only about 10 miles or 10 minute drive from Forest Hills Northern. Uh, it's quite easily for them to get here. The teams, if the game stays like this, they will need their fans and their support definitely to get back into this game. Ball played long. Liz Compton off her line far enough, able to pick it up with much ease and without much stress. Head coach Mark Van Sluten slid Odison into the middle. The Madison's able to try to play DeMario through. However, just a little bit too much on the ball. It is a tactical change from head coach of the Wildcats, Mark Van Sluten. Uh, Morgan Odison, who plays the majority of the game as a forward and attacking player, slides into the center midfield role and is starting to try to orchestrate and take care of the Northview lead and the Northview possession. So far, it's been a pretty good decision. Able to get almost a half chance through DeMario, win the ball right away afterwards. As you can tell, not just being a goal scorer is their strong suit. 
one of those players who's good on the ball, good off the ball, does a lot of those things to help her team succeed and help her team win. With 15 seconds left to go, that ball rolls over the end line again for a Northview goal kick. Probably going to be the last action of this first half from Forest Lesnowski Stadium. Northview is probably not even going to get that free kick in. As you can see here from Forest Hills Nussing Stadium, that is the end of the first half. With our score, Northview 0, DeWitt 1. We'll be right back. You're watching the MHSAA Championships. Applebee's, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how much fun you have after the game. The most heart-stopping, game-changing, tie-turning moments of high school sports. Under Armour Highlights of the Week on the NFHS Network. I knew before it even left my hand. Why? Because every shot I take is the most important one of my life. You can see them, and you can certainly hear them in the stands. Student sections eagerly cheering on their teams in hope of a championship. And thanks to the MHSAA's Battle of the Fans competition, recognizing the top student section in the state, there's another way to bring home another championship banner beyond what happens on the playing surface. Mickey York from Fox Sports Detroit takes a look at this year's Battle of the Fans. What does it mean to be a true fan? Fan is the abbreviation for fanatic, which Webster's defines as one marked by excessive devotion to a cause or idea. Yeah, that sounds about right. For the last four years, the Michigan High School Athletic Association has scoured the mitten for the best fans in the land. The mission of the Battle of the Fans contest is to find the top student cheering section in the state. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you! Being loud, as you can imagine, is a prerequisite, but first and foremost, it's about promoting positive sportsmanship, student body participation, school spirit, originality of cheers, organization of the group, student leadership, and, oh yeah, fun. We've really found that the, the culture is starting to change at schools in regards to sportsmanship around the state. We've got a number of schools that have been involved, and they tell us, their administrators tell us just how their hallways have changed, their games have changed, and, it's, uh, and I think it's because it's become kind of a, a fun and cool thing to do on a Friday night. Schools were encouraged to produce up to a three-minute video highlighting their student section. From there, five finalists were selected and a public vote was held on Facebook, Twitter, and the MHSAA Instagram pages. Say cheese! At that point, it was up to the Student Advisory Council and MHSAA representatives to determine where the next BOTF championship banner would reside. The student sections from Yale, St. John's, Dwajak, and 2013 winner Buchanan and 2014 champion Beaverton made the finals. Each had one last chance to state their case. Getting everybody together, getting loud, going crazy all night long, running the skits perfectly, and just doing what we do every day, and that's win. Basketball team sports, whether we win or lose this competition, it doesn't matter. We help the community and we help the basketball team, and those two goals are done. But a secondary objective would winning that would be cool too. We're back and better than ever. Yeah! Loud. Fun. Enthusiastic. Togetherness. How do you pick just one? Well, you go with the most united. I'm proud to be a chieftain. Give me a D. Give me an O! Give me a... Ah, heck, we'll be here all night. 
Congratulations to the Attack of Dwajak, home of the best fans in the state of Michigan for 2015. As the voice of Michigan's student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports and respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. This is the first game of our doubleheader here tonight from Grand Rapids. We hope you stay with us following this game for another Division II regional semifinal game between the Lakers of Spring Lake and the Chargers of Midland Dow High School. That game comes up at 7 o'clock or about 25 minutes after the conclusion of this contest. Also, on Saturday, MHSAA.TV is your exclusive home for the finals of girls and boys lacrosse. Our coverage begins at 2 p.m. at both locations. Stay with us as we bring through the, the last tournaments of the school year right here on MHSAA.TV. Also, the second half is coming up. You're watching the MHSAA Championships. Initially, I got into officiating because I was a coach and I wanted to learn more about our sport. Now, I officiate because I want to make a difference. Being able to stay um, active with the sport and being able to uh, just interact with the kids and feel like you're still part of the game. The reason I started officiating is I was a very critical uh, sports follower uh, of officials and I felt that I owed something back to the game. You can... The broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and the NHS Network. No reproduction, retransmission, or any other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the expressed written consent of the MHSAA and the NFHS Network. As we're about two minutes and 45 seconds left in halftime, this is Justin Harden back to you and for MHSAA TV in the NFHS network. Both coaches talking to their teams intently in the last seven minutes, trying to make sure they got the things buttoned down, those things, those, everything worked out. Especially Northview coming into this game, coming into the second half down by one. Uh, Coach Van Sluten actually breaks his team already with two minutes left to go in the halftime. Something I've seen Mark Van Sluten do a lot, get his coaching points in, get his team ready to play. And just after that, Coach Mubarak of DeWitt Panthers does the same. Looking at this game and looking at what's going on and how both teams have fared in the first 40 minutes of soccer, both teams coming out hard, doing the right stuff. However, I do believe DeWitt has, ca has carried much of the possession and much of the opportunities. And that opportunity that Marissa DeMario had early on in the first All half or midway through the first half has truly played an interesting eye and would definitely be a different out outcome of that first half if she would have been able to bury that system. Not exactly a bad effort, right in the right spot. Unfortunately not able to finish that goal. So it leaves them down by one here as we get ready to start the second half of this game. As we look down here, a lot of officials are starting to congregate right before the start of the second half. And one of the officials for our second game shows up. And you look at them and says, why do they officiate? Some officiate to stay active and fit. Others officiate to travel and meet new people. Some officiate because they say they get the best seat in the house. To become a registered high school game official, call or click the MHSAA. You can be a referee. As a former high school official in, in boys and girls soccer, uh, I can definitely attest to you that that best seat in the house thing 
is definitely one of the one of the perks. You're down there on the field right in the moment. You get to relive those moments just as the players do. It's one of those situations where you can't replace and you can't take away. However, in, in, just, not just in soccer, there are a whole bunch of that uh, high school sports the MHSAA does recognize. Boys and girls lacrosse, volleyball, track and field, cross country, football, basketball, boys and girls, competitive cheerleading. Uh, there's so many things that you can do that if you have a passion for a sport and want to carry on that knowledge to the younger generations and help them out, there is definitely a way for you to get involved. You know, both teams up here ready for the kickoff. Both teams look at their line and back up in a 4-4-2. Looks like Otteson has slid back into the forward position. Going to slide back up there alongside DeMario at the start of the second half. And that wind has picked up. So that wind is going to help Northview uh, as Northview is attacking from your right to left. However, Northview does take the kickoff right back to the center back right away. Is able to keep that in the right motion. Try to keep possession right off the bat. DeWitt does win possession of the ball back. DeWitt picking up right where they left off. Comfortable in possession. Comfortable holding the ball. Nothing under pressure there. DeWitt looking to make the best of their advantage. There's Bishop coming right back where she started too. Putting, putting that back line of Northview under pressure. Forcing them to make mistakes. And it does pay off. DeWitt's able to keep possession of the ball in their attacking half. They're able to keep Northview on the heels. Big cross field ball by number seven, Danielle Steffen. It's a hard ball to hit when you're hitting it 40 yards across the field, especially with your left foot, which is not a common occurrence in girls' soccer. To see a girl who can hit a ball that far with her weak foot, unless that, of course, that is her dominant foot. Uh, just not a common occurrence in today's game. Ball played through the midfield in the back wonderfully, and the point of attack is switched from DeWitt Panthers. The Panthers players right there, not exactly on the same page, uh, expecting a quicker overlap and it not happening. And the ball does get cleared back in. Is that Otteson work ethic and the quick tenaciousness of Morgan Otteson? Both other teams in here are set up for their next game. Both teams arrived at the stadium. Like we said earlier, you Spring Lake Lakers and the Midland Dow Chargers. Uh, about three and a half hours or three hours or so separating both teams. Uh, being in that north uh, district and that north region uh, is a little interesting. You get to see teams come that would never play each other in the regular season uh, that get mixed up. Bishop played through on a ball. Ball sneaks through. 1v1 with the goalkeeper. And with a class finish to that far left side, or far left side of goalkeeper Liz Compton. Difficult save to make. He's able to make them pay. In less than three minutes in the second half, that lead is doubled by the foot of number nine, Taylor Bishop. In the battle of the two freshman forwards today, Taylor Bishop has gotten on the scoreboard. Uh, Odison for Northview has not. And she'll be definitely looking here in the next 37 and a half minutes to get her name up on that scoreboard as well. A great ball through. Split the two defenders. Is able to split the two backs in there right away. And Bishop makes no mess of it. Comes right back in. Gets played in with a glorious finish to that far post. Difficult save for a goalkeeper in there to get played into the hands there. DeMario right back on with Otteson. Unfortunately, doesn't get all of her foot onto the ball. And DeWitt's able to clear the ball right away. And if you're, gonna, if you're a coach drawing up a goal kick or a kickoff play, that's one of the things you want to do. They, be, they did it almost to perfection uh, with DeMario having a half chance right there just after going down 2 nothing. Fifty fifty ball there. Ball goes out of bounds. For a Northview throw in.
This 2 nothing goal, 2 nothing lead that DeWitt has is one of those leads, especially in soccer, they talk about as being one of the most dangerous things to have. Teams with two up by two have that comments and have that knowledge every once in a while where they just back off the pedal a little bit, give up a goal. Now the other team that just scored has momentum. However, if you have that two-goal lead and you're able to score again, a three nothing, a three-goal lead is pretty insurmountable in girls' soccer. Uh, it's not uncommon that that's what the coaches are going for to get up by three. So DeWitt's definitely not going to take their foot off the pedal here. They're going to try to get through, get another one in on there. As you can see by that competitive nature of number two, Erica Curley just throwing her body there in front of uh, Dominique Robinson. Once again, you see DeWitt just popping into those passing lanes, doing a great job getting into, this, getting into the right space. DeMario trying to combine with Otteson. Otteson with the ball going 1v2. Is able to beat the first defender, but right there, number eight, Brianna Bishop, is able to stuff that out and clear that ball out for a throw-in for Northview. Northview trying to gain some momentum here, trying to switch the point of attack. Does try to get a stick, try to get a foot in there. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Demario trying to press out wide. And do it just ends up clearing the ball out for a throw-in for the Northview Wildcats on the far side of the field. Ball gets played over the end line. Goal kick for the DeWitt Panthers. Number one, Brooklyn Holly, the goalkeeper here. Calls back number 17, Jessa McManus to take it. Common occurrence in the in the girls' soccer game is having your center back to come down and clear it. Generally, they can clear it up the field. If something does go wrong, you'd have two players back rather than one. Bishop trying to play in her teammate. Unfortunately, the ball's a little bit too far forward of her. And Liz Compton's able to come off her line quickly and pick it up. You know, that goal that Liz gave up in the start of the second half, it's one of those goals that is, is a great class finish. Uh, low to the far side against where the keeper is in position. It's difficult to go back down there. And the ball did hit on the side netting. Uh, when her goal is 8 yards wide or 24 feet, and it's really hard for somebody to cover all 24 feet of that. And that was a class finish. Put to the far side netting uh, to give the two goal advantage to the DeWitt Panthers. Let's see a force pass there from the Wildcats. It's going to play in number 13, Fisher. Gets played in. Able to win the second ball. Ball gets deflected and bounces around. You hear some, some fans calling for a handball. Unfortunately, the ball just bounces through. Ball hit from height and distance. Not a very difficult save for Liz Compton. Just sitting back on her line, relaxing, waiting for things to happen. And getting that goal so early in the second half is such a motivator and such a good thing uh, for, these, for these Panthers from DeWitt. Just gets that confidence rolling, gets the thing rolling. Can make Dorothy take a step back and relax a little bit. Uh, but they got some great stuff going on uh, with the DeWitt Panthers. This time, number 18 gets played through. Allison Sims gets played in. Uh, takes a sort of off-balance shot that goes goes pretty good wide. Goes out for a goal kick uh, for the Wildcats. Out of you can see on the top of your screen, you can see the Dow Chargers starting to jog over on the far side, getting ready for their second game, or for their, their district uh, regional semifinal game. Just starting to get warm, starting to get the blood moving. Long bus ride from Midland Dow. Gonna get everything moving here. Dawes on the end of the ball. Tries to play Bishop through. Bishop is offside. Referee does play advantage, keeps it in the goalkeeper's hands. Definitely a true advantage. Uh, for high school keepers and even stock keepers in general, if the goalkeepers can keep the ball in their hands, uh, it's definitely a lot easier for them than playing a free kick off the ground. Ball gets flicked on to Otteson. 
trying to make something happen here for the Wildcats. Isn't afraid to take anybody on 1v1. See Catherine Locker keep her feet moving, standing her up there. Bishop this time gets ahead on it. However, that ball does go out of bounds for a corner kick for the Wildcats Northview. Northview sending both center backs up. Generally, the center backs are, one of, are some of the better players in the air uh, with their head. Uh, Morgan Addison on the goalkeeper trying to distract her. Wrap it up. Ball served in by Duchesne. Over the head of anybody. Goes to the foot of Bishop. Bishop calmly keeps it. Looking for Dawes to play her through. He's able to keep it at Keep it with feet, keep it with feet. Mackenzie Dawes, quick transition here, numbers up. Is able to find that ball to Allison Sims. Allison Sims fights off the tackle, goes 1v1 to the goalkeeper, and unfortunately hits it right at Liz Compton, gets her hands up, makes a quick reaction save through. And as you can tell, that ball had some pace on it. Liz Compton can feel that in her palms, just trying to catch her breath. Good hard shot taken by Sims, and a good save by Liz Compton. Rafferty calmly doing the doing the good thing, letting Compton check her breath. Get back in there as her hands calm things down. Ensuing corner. And it is a header in the back of the net from DeWitt. Can't see who it was. Can't see what's going on. Trying to find the number. But a great goal from the DeWitt Panthers with 29 minutes and 42 seconds left to go in this first half to put them up by a score of three to zero. Goal looks like it was scored by number seven, Danielle Steffen, one of those super sophomores for the DeWitt Panthers. Ball served in by Mackenzie Dawes. Good header, good chance to win. Great, great finish to jump up and get things up. Right away we're trying to go through. Number seven, Danielle Steffen. It's one of those things now, 30 minutes left to go, down by three. Northview's got to get on that front foot of the accelerator and make, things, make some things happen. Game is not over by far. However, whoever gets that, whoever can get a next goal, if Northview can get it, momentum is hopefully building their way. The Panthers get it, and that door pretty much gets slammed shut. Dawes up on the ball going against Dominique Robinson. Dawes gets played in. Robinson recovers well. Dawes plays it back real quick for a side-footed shot from just inside the 18. Ball goes just wide. It's one of those chances there's a coach you're going to talk about her afterwards going through the ball. Ball's coming to her. She hits it, sort of sits back and just tries to hit the ball, but she has to keep running forward on it to keep the ball on target. It's one of those things that I'm sure Coach Mubarak's going to say after the fact. Or fortunately for the DeWitt Panthers, that isn't going to distract from their game right now with that three-goal lead. Odison gets played through. Bishop running back with her. Bishop makes a great sliding tackle to clear the ball. Now Bishop with the goal on the, on the offensive side. Older sister uh, defending the goal on the other side. Ball kicked out for a corner this time. Let's see if Northview can get someone here again. Once again, both, oh, only one center back this time going up for the Wildcats. Don't want to get caught in transition by Mackenzie Dawes. Uh, definitely one of those better players there, uh, wrapping things up. You know, by looking at this game with, a, with Bishop in the back and Bishop up top and Mackenzie Dawes with her up top, uh, it's, DeWitt definitely has a ton of potential here. Want a DVD of today's game? It's easy. Just click the light blue Buy DVD on the screen just below the video player and order your keepsake now. You can also search for DVDs from other events in other years by clicking the dark blue Buy DVD button at the top of your screen. One of those things, especially co-players want this game, I'm sure. Uh, Mackenzie Dawes, uh, Bishop, and number seven, Danielle Steffen. Uh, with goals, of the, goals for the game, one of those things you definitely want to remember. And when you look at it, we're coming down here to the 
regional semifinals. In the state finals, you have two teams. State semifinals, you have four. Regional finals, you have eight. Regional semifinals, you have 16. So you're one of 16 teams playing today. We're playing in the next couple days. Uh, your season has gone on longer than most, and you're going to keep it going here today if you keep things moving right for the DeWitt Panthers. Ball played through. DeMario trying to get on it. Holly comes off her line really easily. Also helped the fact that Holly's defender is able to shield DeMario off the ball and shield her off the goalkeeper. Makes the save relatively easy and routine. Long ball played through. Does skip through. You see a little scrappiness of the do it. Do it outside midfielder attacking and the outside back for Northview uh, just as the ball comes into the feet into the hands of Liz Compton. Ball played out wide, the outside back for DeWitt, making a really big overlapping run. As you see defenders go, it's great to see defenders get involved in the attack. And number 15, uh, Catherine Locker there is not afraid to do it. Makes a 60-yard run to try to get involved in the play. And comes up here and does, does get the return pass, unfortunately. Uh, the first touch after the return pass fails her a little bit. That ball rolls over the end line. Miscommunication there. Ball does go back to the Northview Wildcats. Northview being calm in the back here. Bishop and Dawes going to the two goalkeepers. Bishop played back in. Ball shot in across her body for the second goal for her this evening. Putting the score 4 to 0 in the favor of the Whip Panthers. Now you can see those two players working together. And you can see why coach, head coach Jamal Mubarak is really excited about getting Mackenzie Dawes back here about six games ago. Uh, her talent on the ball and calmness on the ball is pretty much second to none today. She's getting the ball played into her feet. Being composed, making the right decisions, finding the right players in passing lanes, and doing all the right things. I mean, she played Bishop into a great ball. And the easiest part there was getting a finish. I mean, she great finish to the back against her body against the goalkeeper again. Uh, but a lot of that work has been done by Mackenzie Dawes. Uh, gets in the right places, does the right stuff. Uh, and, I mean, only a sophomore. Great potential in there. You know, four nothing left or four nothing down, with 24 minutes left to go in the game. It's definitely an uphill battle for the Northview Wildcats, but it only takes about 10 seconds, 15 seconds for that ball to go in the back of the net. So you get a couple goals or one goal right away, it should be great. Here comes Morgan Addison going right at Bishop. Ball bouncing through, calmly played in by Jessa McManus. You can see the ball bouncing around in there, and Demario looking for it after the Addison Addison strike. Uh, definitely finding the right place. Just unfortunately not bouncing the right way. Be part of the conversation about high school sports. Grab your cell phone and follow the MHSAA on Twitter at MHSAA. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram for in-game updates, event announcements, and high school sports news around the state year-round. You can connect with the MHSAA today. And as you saw earlier in the halftime, halftime, halftime sequence of the Battles of the Fans, that social media part of this plays a huge role in this. Uh, I know the Battle of Fans is popular around West Michigan and all over the school uh, or all over the state and how they're doing things. It's one of those things where it gets people out there and, one of, and gets people to know more about your program, about your school. And it's a great way for kids to take pride in what they do. Uh, and social media plays a huge role in that. And especially with the amount of fans in the stands at every MHSAA sporting event, uh, announcements and scores are coming in all over. Uh, social media is a great platform for, for parents and fans and, and student-athletes to really 
get their point across and get their school out there for everybody to see. Great ball through again. This time Bishop to a right foot. Fortunately, the touch fails there this time, which is pretty rare for this evening. Long distance shot taken by Erica Curley uh, after Bishop fought through it. Uh, Compton in the right spot at the right time. Was able to pick it up with, with very, very little struggle. Even with a 4 nothing lead here, DeWitt's, DeWitt's definitely not letting up. They're able to get some of their bench players in and some players that might not have played that much in earlier districts or earlier in the districts. Uh, however, they're not going to take their foot off the pedal. As you can tell with number 13, Kaylee Fisher, coming back into the game. And then so far the start of the game, number 21, Mackenzie Dawes. Definitely want to keep that door shut. Make sure teams don't get much momentum in and make sure they get the things going in the right direction. Unless Midland Dow wins, Midland Dow wins tonight, then the regional final will be on Saturday morning at 10.30. Bishop gets played in a great one touch through. Compton comes out. Bishop calmly takes a touch, fights through the ball, puts it into the, into the goal for her third goal of the evening. You know, able to get through the center back, split out, played through. Uh, Compton comes off her line, slides out. Uh, Bishop takes a touch around her and calmly puts the ball in the back of the net for her third goal of the evening. Putting the score with 20 minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the game. DeWitt Panthers 5, Northview Wildcats 0. Do you know you can step up and become a registered game official while you're in high school? The Legacy Program gives high school students an opportunity to get involved in officiating and serves as a launching pad for the next generation of referees. Getting started is easy. To learn more about the Legacy Officiating Program, call or click the Michigan High, Th Michigan High School Athletic Association. As I'm sitting here talking about the Legacy Official Program, our producer today, Mr. Alex Tannis of Cedar Springs TV, is pointing himself, saying that's him as well. Actively involved in uh, baseball and softball officiating and football officiating as well. And hockey, uh, multi-sport official there, and one of those players, he's, he's going to be a senior in high school. He's just finished up his junior year of high school today. Uh, one of those things where he wants to be actively involved as, as a referee and as an official. It's one of those plays that he can give back to the game and back to the sports. Um, it's definitely a role model for what we do. Bishop pressuring Dominique Robinson back. Ball goes back to Compton. Compton's able to clear past midfield. Ball is flicked on, but here goes Bishop and DeMario again. This isn't the first time we've seen that today. And just by that pressure from DeMario, Bishop getting knocked off the ball a little bit. Ball comes back through. It is one on the scoreboard for the Northview Wildcats. Scored by number two, wow. Olivia Deshane. Just sort of one of those fluke things. Uh, goalkeeper Brooklyn Holly caught, bouncing off her line a bit, sliding across. Uh, Deshane hits it, sort of a, sort of a mixer or a, or a blue ball to the back post. Holly does get a hand to it. Unfortunately, the fingers and wrist aren't strong enough, and the ball falls into that far side netting. So with 18 minutes and 50 seconds left, Northview is able to get on the scoreboard here with a score of 5-1. to one. Uh, Definitely some heart still left in those Wildcats, and they're going to do their best uh, to get back into this game as much as they possibly can. You know, these seniors and, and players from Northview 
uh, want to leave it all left on the field. And they're definitely going to do their best here. Here they get played again. DeMario and Bishop again. One of those battles. This time DeMario gets the worst end of that. Leans in on Bishop. It, it unfortunately falls over and loses her balance. Looks like the player in this, the midfielder there, number four, and the outside back for DeWitt, not on the same page. Uh, number four, uh, Zyra uh, Mata Velasquez is looking to get her player to come in up an overlap. Defender's a little bit slower and off the mark on there, and the ball ends up rolling out of bounds. Odison tries to play into Shane again. DeShane gets a foot to it. So does Brooklyn Holly. Uh, Brooklyn Holly's foot's a little bit stronger than DeShane's. Ball goes all the, out of, all the way out of bounds for a throw in for the Wildcats. You know, we haven't seen we haven't seen Brooklyn Holly tested that much today. Uh, that goal she just gave up to DeShane, but that time right there, making herself big, and the first time effort off DeShane uh, gets knocked in the foot by Holly and cleared. I mean, that's a 25-yard clearance uh, based on that on her foot there. Definitely a good aspect and a good effort there from the goalkeeper uh, being ready to there. But a great cross field ball, I believe, came from uh, DeShane as well. Not DeShane. Sorry, maybe Lawrence Spatoski, or Riley Spatoski, uh, for Northview all the way across the field. Deshane in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, ball isn't going to bounce into the back of the net for her second goal in about two minutes. You know, sitting here looking at the bench on DeWitt, mostly fairly calm, all the coaching staff sitting down. All the players sitting down watching the game go by. It's one of those things where you just want that clock to get down to zero as fast as possible. And now being having a four-goal lead to be able to get out here as healthy as possible as well. Going to have to turn this around and play a game in just a few days. But those girls have been doing that for the last couple weeks. Uh, most high school teams near the end of the season are playing three games a week. Some playing three games in four days. Some games three games in three days. Uh, and then, of course, last week with districts playing three games in about five days. Erica Curley in there. I uh, like we talked about Matt, Matt Velasquez in there up top for, for the DeWitt Panthers. Uh, maybe her face team in the game. And DeWitt just calmly keeping the ball moving around. Through ball goes right through to Liz Compton, though. She's able to pick that ball back up. DeMario with the acrobatic effort, trying to back heel that ball all the way to Duchesne. Good effort there from the DeWitt Panthers there. Ball comes bouncing through. Compton a little hesitant on her line. Ball calmly bouncing in there. And number 16, Madison Teeman, the Panthers, being calm as well, letting that ball bounce at the right place, the right time, and hitting the ball when she needed to. And unfortunately, uh, not, not hitting it right on target, but just missing high and wide to that far side. DeWitt still finding those passing lanes, still finding that confident touch in there. Shot from big distance, sails way over. Liz Compton is going to find her, putting that ball back in the six-yard box for another one of the goal kicks, which has happened probably more tonight than she liked, which means she's facing more shots or, or more shots are coming towards that end of the field. However, DeMario is still laying it on the line there, running as hard as she can up there, trying to put teams under pressure, trying to do all that stuff uh, that you want a senior leader to do. You know, she's trying to not let this be her last high school game. She's committed to doing everything she can to helping her team fight and work, just like freshman Morgan Otteson right there. If 
fights through a challenge and cleared off the defender uh, for a Northview Wildcat throw in. Feet get tangled there, but number two, Erica Curley comes away with the ball for the Panthers. You know, a lot of that success that we talked about was coming through the feet of number 21, Mackenzie Dawes. There's a lot of stuff off the ball that people might not see. You know, she's working to find the ball all the time. She gets on the ball right there. And a quick little one-touch uh, out to the wide side. She seems to know the players, where most of the players are. Uh, before the ball receives to her feet. And at the high school level, if you can do that, you are in a definite true advantage. Uh, that's going to be a great thing for things to happen. Uh, if that player knows what's going on around her before it happens, uh, she's able to play faster, play quicker, and definitely move the ball way more, way more efficiently uh, than a teammate or a player who's looking around. Uh, it's one of those things that you get by playing soccer at a high level for a long time, but not only playing soccer, uh, watching soccer. The more you watch the game of soccer, the more you watch the game, the game, the more you understand it, and the more you can see. Just under 12 minutes left to go in the game. Uh, Northview with the throw-in, attacking third of the field, trying to get another one of those goals. Cut this deficit from five to five to one to five to two, uh, but it's definitely an uphill battle. Watch student-produced video of high school action in a variety of athletic and non-athletic events and activities from around the state on the MHSAA.tv website. Over the past three years, school broadcast program members have produced over 6,000 events online. Get your school involved. Visit MHSAA.tv for more information. Can't stress, that, can't stress enough how much that is, uh, how much that's important for kids getting real-world experience, real-world stuff. Uh, through a program that the MHSA is encouraged to do. It's awesome. Uh, our kids are out here every day. We have two kids out here right now, uh, Jessica Ryder on camera, and our producer Alex Tannis sitting at the computer, the switcher, and the soundboard. Uh, these kids are learning firsthand what it takes to be in the television business and the broadcasting business uh, that wasn't afforded to a lot of people uh, until recently. And the school broadcast program and the MHSA.tv do a great job uh, at getting kids involved and getting people involved uh, in that element at a really effective, relatively effective and inexpensive way. Still up by four. Uh, Mackenzie Dawes, not done yet, still working. Crosses the ball in. Ball is played underneath. Keepers are finding it. The scrum down there. Players from DeWitt trying to get it. Nor if you throw in their bodies involved. And goalkeeper Liz Compton trying to make herself as big as possible and does end up with the ball in her hands. Do it with a nice spot, a couple one touch, two touch passing there. And <laughs> goes right back to the feet of Mackenzie Dawes. it definitely comfortable in possession trying to keep that ball moving across the field and let the ball do the work uh, we don't care how fast the player is uh, the ball moves a lot faster no chances taken there uh, by McManus number 17 in the back for the Panthers as she clears the ball with enthusiasm and allows her teammates to get back uh, and set up on the attack Good ball in a passing lane there. Uh, Northview trying to find their feet still. Just trying, just still trying to find that confidence. And do it, doing a great job getting into those passing lanes and making Northview really have to chase the game. Uh, if you can stay in those passing lanes, it's definitely going to be a benefit to you. Uh, Dominique Robinson and Mackenzie Dawes getting there. 
Balls end up being cleared by Northview. It's been a pretty good battle between the number eights uh, for the Northview Wildcats, Mercy DeMario, and for the DeWitt Panthers, uh, Brianna Bishop. Great battle back and forth. Physical game, physically played. Uh, both players definitely trying to do their best uh, to leave it all on the field. Clock just clicks under eight minutes. Still with, with the Whit Panthers leading by four by a score of five to one over the North U Wildcats. Number 19, Alyssa Handspike, leading for the Panthers. Addison, for one of the first times, gets sprung through. Takes a snapshot from about 20 yards out. It just sails over the goal, and it looked like underneath the football upright. So there's not a big difference there between the heights. Uh, but she definitely had that, had that change of pace and that explosiveness uh, and that great shot coming through. 